Good morning. I'm Ernie Bauer, the Senior Advisor and Director of the Southeast Asia Program here at, at CSIS. And we are very lucky this morning to have the Indonesian Ambassador to the United States and actually a good friend of mine, Dino Dijal, with us. Good morning, Dino. Good morning, Ernie. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, Indonesia and what's happening there. We'll talk a little bit about the relationship uh, and then Indonesia's role sure. globally and regionally. First of all, could you tell uh, the audience, for those who aren't familiar with Indonesia, sort of what what is Indonesia? What's your size? What's your outlook? Well, thank you. Uh, Indonesia now is, uh, we call ourselves the emerging economy. Uh, we used to be called third world. Now uh, we proudly call ourselves an emerging economy and a G20 economy. There, there's in fact a new profile about Indonesia that is different than say 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, Indonesia now is the world's third largest democracy right. with the largest country in Southeast Asia, the largest economy in Southeast Asia. Uh, we have uh, the, the largest young people uh, in, in uh, Asia and in fact uh, many of them are, uh, we are number three users if not maybe even number two of Facebooks mm. and also among the top five in the use of Twitter. So a very <laughs> large hip and optimistic uh, 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 y y young people. You're and a tweeter yourself, aren't you? Yeah, I have a, t a, t a Twitter account. Yeah, yeah I'm, I have. You notice you're a, you got a huge following on, on Twitter too. I got about forty-two thousand last time I checked, <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, quite happy with it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So on the U.S. Indonesia relationship, mm -hmm. um, in the past it's been sort of suspicious, uh, but now you seem to have transformed it into something. Uh, very, uh, it, it's very important for us, I know. Uh, could you talk a little bit about where the relationship is? Well, uh, the uh, relationship now has reached a new level, opened a new era. It's called a comprehensive partnership. And this was inaugurated during President Barack Obama's visit to Indonesia last year in November, mm -hmm. and which was a very historic visit. He was received like a rock star. Uh, he gave a very big speech at University of Indonesia, and it was watched uh, live on TV by the whole nation. And it was the speech that also redefined uh, the relationship between Indonesia and America. This relationship is meant to be comprehensive in that it is not driven by a single issue, mm. as uh, it seemed to feel in the past. It's supposed to be forward-looking, uh, uh, that uh, is based on shared ideals and common interests. And it's also not just a bilateral relationship. It's supposed to be a relationship that matters regionally and in a global context. There's a lot of global issues that we can work with, issues such as climate change, the environment, people smuggling, terrorism, the uh, reforming the, uh, the financial uh, ar architecture, and so on. So it's a totally a new relationship based on the fact that both America and Indonesia are different nations now, and they have to, f they have to function in a different uh, a different world setting, the, the brave new world where both Indonesia and, Indone and America has to reposition itself. And in that process of repositioning ourselves, we are finding greater relevance in uh, the way we build our partnership. Mm. Uh, you know, Americans have, have seem to have fallen uh, a little bit behind in terms of China in, in the region. Uh, is that true in Indonesia? And there are areas where you think we should focus on to sort of catch up? Well, uh, thanks for bringing it up because uh, one of my line here is that mm. uh, when America thinks of Asia, uh, think of Indonesia. Mm. Uh, because uh, I think the tendency has been to think of China or, right. or Japan and to some extent India, but there's Indonesia and there's ASEAN. So it is important uh, for America to, especially American public to know that. But definitely one area that needs uh, to be sped up is the uh, education. Mm. Uh, I think we need more Indonesian students here. Uh, there's, the number has declined by half already, you know, uh, and we need to uh, redouble that. And we need, uh, uh, the thing is, uh, in the short and medium term, no one can still match America's innovation and centers of excellence and universities, uh, your MITs, your Harvard mm. and Silicon Valleys, you know. And uh, the trick is how to get Indonesians uh, to connect uh, uh, to these uh, um, uh, amazing resources. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I hope uh, we can get more. I, I'm, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, Indonesia's actually been through a great uh, transition over mm -hmm. the last decade or so, uh, dec two decades, so we should say. Uh, but, you know, you've really moved to become as you say, a democracy, third largest democracy in the world. How does that affect Indonesia's outlook uh, now that you are chairman of uh, 
of ASEAN. You're chair of the East Asia Summit this year. You're now a member of the G20. What, what does it mean? Uh, what is the Indonesian outlook for sure. foreign affairs? Well, um, I mean, several things. Uh, first, at the macro level, uh, well, we experienced something very new. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, yeah, quite strange even. <laughs> because for the first time, we look at the international landscape, we've, we realize we have no more enemies, no more state enemies. Mm. Uh, there's no country that we regard as enemy. Uh, and there's no country that regards Indonesia as an enemy, right? So this is different because in the past, there's always been some country that we regard as enemy or adversary. Mm -hmm. So we are in a very unique strategic landscape. Uh, secondly, on the question of uh, democracy, we realize that we are proud to be a democracy and we want democracy and human rights to be reflected in regional values and international values. So we're not shy about it. When we uh, designed the ASEAN Charter, we've always insisted that democratic principles and respect for human rights must be at the heart of this ASEAN spirit, no matter what political system you have. Right. And uh, fortunately, uh, this uh, has uh, transpired. But we also realize our limitations. Uh, our method is usually a soft sell, uh, Ernie. Uh, that means that we're not really in the business of exporting our democracy or imposing on others, mm. but it's more on lessons learned and a soft approach. Uh, one, one way is, for example, in the Bali Democracy Forum, uh, which has been rather successful, going on several years, and we invite countries to come and discuss uh, their experience with democracy with one another. Right? Uh, I think that is, given our, uh, our size and, and our resources and assets, that is the best way for us to promote democracy mm -hmm. with soft sell uh, and uh, you know, in a humble way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been very active with the embassy, sort of spreading Indonesian soft power, if mm -hmm. I might say. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to mention to uh, some of our viewers in terms of some initiatives that you have coming up? Uh, well, yeah. Well, first, send me send me some some more jokes because I <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the the best way to talk to Americans you got to talk uh, some jokes first. I'm running out of jokes there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, secondly, uh, well, we are launching this thing called the One Million Friends and Partner uh, uh, campaign. That is uh, a program uh, where we want uh, you know in the last six months I've traveled throughout America. I've seen a lot of Indonesians and Americans, but their dots are not connected. Mm between yes. one another, they don't know one another. Right. Uh, and, and we want to establish more than just Friends of Indonesia, we want to establish the Indonesia Network, which is the next level. And uh, we hope anybody who has anything to do with Indonesia, whether you like our food, you like our movies, you like our batik, or you have business uh, in Indonesia, uh, please uh, join the, the, the Indonesia Network. Hmm. Uh, and we're also starting some things at the very grassroots level. We have the Skype Friends Indonesia USA, which means we connect uh, elementary schools in America with Indonesia mm -hmm. and ha have them uh, and uh, have conversations. It's been it's quite great. good. Yeah. Great use of technology to connect Absolutely. people. Absolutely, free. The dots. Skype is free also. It's free too, yeah, that's <laughs> good. Um, one last question. You, uh, you know the United States well. You, you went to school here. Um, and our president uh, actually knows Indonesia well. He went to school there in uh, Indonesia. If you were advising him ahead of his visit to Indonesia this coming up this fall, uh, you know, Mr. President, how you ought to think about uh, these three things as you approach uh, your visit to Indonesia this fall. For, and a lot of that includes some regional uh, summits. What would what would be your advice to President Obama? Well, I would uh, tell him that uh, since his last visit, uh, there has been a tremendous reservoir of uh, goodwill and affection towards the United States. Uh, Great. So, so that is a good thing, and that is something that we must harness. Uh, now, secondly, uh, I think uh, focus on soft power uh, issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there has been an image in the past that uh, America's relationship had been. Uh, represented by hard power issues, you know, military uh, restrictions and uh, uh, all kinds of hard power issues. Right. But now I think I would pick three. One is definitely education, okay. right? Because that's a game changer. And uh, through education, you invest in Indonesia's future and also in America's future. Exactly. Uh, hey, I graduated from uh, American high school, and yeah. so my father graduated from American University. We are invested in this relationship, right? So one is education, second is entrepreneurship. There's mm. now religion in Indonesia with entrepreneurship. It's the new thing. Mm. And if any force can change Indonesia's future, 
uh, like in any country in the world, it is entrepreneurship. Because mm. when you produce entrepreneurs, you produce people who provide jobs, not seek jobs. Right? Exactly. And third is the environment. You know, we have the third largest uh, forestry, uh, tropical rainforest in the world. Uh, we are called an environmental superpower. So there's a lot of work that can be done, both in clean energy, in forestry preservation, uh, and so on and so on. Because Indonesia is uh, has the most capacity to absorb the greenhouse emissions, and America is the largest greenhouse emission emitter in the world, right? So the cooperation between our countries can also be very relevant. Ambassador Dino Dijal, thank you for coming to CSIS. Thank really you, Ernie. I want to also time. compliment you on the amazing work that uh, you've done. I really enjoy uh, your, your biweekly emails uh, about uh, Southeast Asia. It's a work of uh, high quality, and please keep them uh, coming. <laughs> I really enjoy reading them. We will do. Thank you very thank much, you. sir.